church, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Yes, we gotta wake up, church. This is Ethan from FindingPeaceWithJesus.org. Um, at One World Under God. How's everybody doing? It's been a while. Today it's Friday, August 17th, 2018. Um, I, I come on here, I, I, I received a book the other day, and of course, I couldn't get enough of it, and I read it real quick. Um, before I get into that book, um, I want to talk real quick and, and touch face with everybody. Um, obviously, I need to be on here more. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to get balance. I'm trying to pray to God. Obviously, God's the most important thing, and try to get guidance about what to do about certain things. Um, but what's been on my heart, obviously, obviously with the children, it never stops. Praying for the children and people caught in the lies of sin and the works of the enemy. Um, there was a grand jury report on the Catholic Church that came out the other day. Um, I've been going through it. Obviously, it's over 800 pages. There's, there's certain places where it's... I don't know. It's, it seems like it's much more. There was one that was 1,100 pages. So I assume that the one I got, there's certainly more to it. But a lot of uh, the stuff, just, just like they get, get from the government, it's been redacted. But of course they say it's from the ongoing uh, litigation and things like that. Um, but one thing I will say about it before I talk about it, hopefully over the weekend... Um, that me being from Pittsburgh, you have the major cha news channels in Pittsburgh. And it, it kind of proves that my area is a highly Catholic driven area. Um, I would have to say at least 90%. You know, certain areas of Pittsburgh are 100% full blown Catholic areas. I'm just down the street from one. Um, but on the news, on the, on the three major news networks, you know, you, I just say them CBS, NBC, and ABC. Uh, you can look them up in Pittsburgh. Um, they're kind of whitewashing the situation. You know, everybody, it doesn't matter what's going on. It's That's what's so aggravating about watching the news. They keep saying the word, allegedly. I wish that word would be erased from the dictionary because um, what I was reading, was it wasn't no alleged abuse of the Catholic Church. This was them admitting it. This was details of certain areas. Obviously, you got the major areas. I'll just go, you know, Altoona, Erie, but of course here in Pittsburgh. Um, but reading, they're very detailed, this report. And of course, I want to go talk about it more tomorrow, or if not, if not Sunday. And I'm definitely going to talk about it, hopefully, if I can get a hold of Michael from Old Truth, Old Dystopia, Knowing versus Belief. Um, we'll see what happens with that, because I'd like to talk to him about it. Because um, I've been, you know, this is an issue that's close to my heart, the, the Catholic people. You know, I I have a hard time, and of course, reading this book, which I'm going to get into, is doing things out of love. It's God's love. And so when I speak out about the Catholic Church, I have a love for the Catholic people. I have a love for everybody that's caught in sin, and they have no clue what's going on because the enemy... You know, you put those blinders on, the enemy blinds their eyes. So, it, 
it's it, these are difficult subjects that I get into and I'll 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 stumble across it sometimes because it's hard because you know when you got the spirit inside you the Holy Spirit moving and I say it all the time seeing what you see hearing what you hear you know it's very upsetting to him he he cries I think that's why it's been raining so much which <laughs> that's that that's why. That's why it's raining so much, because this is his tears, crying out to his children that they need to wake up, and that all this abuse has been going on, and it hasn't stopped. Um, with this abuse, if you if you read through all these, oh, is it three hundred pedophile priests, a thousand victims, which I, that number's a lie. I think it's a lot more. You just. Let me put it this way. You have a thousand victims in Pennsylvania. How many states do we have? Do the math. That's over 15,000 pedophiles. And that's just in the Catholic Church. I've studied it. That's only in the Catholic Church. Never mind the other people that I expose on a daily level because that's what God called me to do to be a watchman gotta expose this stuff and of course being on the watchman you're sitting on that wall you're looking out watching out for evil but the problem is you can turn around and look down and see the evils in your camp and the hidden evil that we call this the Catholic Church which is Christianity, which it's not. It's not Christianity. I, I don't want to get into this. I, I apologize because that's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to talk about a man that I heard about a while back um, from Brother Michael's show. Old Dystopia Knowing versus Belief. Oh. The link will be in the website. I always... <laughs> Michael has a hard time remembering his own name of his uh, site with the, the audios that he does. So if I stumble, Michael, I, I'm very sorry. I just... I want to lead people there. And of course, I'll have links at the end of this video. Um, but I first heard David Arthur... I'm a wonderful man of God. God is doing a powerful work in him. Just lately, he's he's changing his direction. We go down that straight path and he veers us off to go to different directions. Because this is the way we need to go. And of course, there's the rocks we have to go over. and Sometimes we got to bust right through. But he keeps us on that narrow path. So David Arthur. I'll just go through it real quick. Um, David Arthur was abused when he was a child. And he was thrown into this lifestyle. That found him. he found himself on the streets living to survive. And he ended up as a at a young age, I, which I was kind of shocked. He was... He, <laughs> I can't think where it is. But he was 14 when he contracted HIV. And he was living with it the whole time. And But as he progressed, he, he was just... The, the abused becomes the abuser and he's you know he, he was talking about sleeping with over a thousand men if you read this book I'm going to go through it God bear with me this book I'm going to put it on the website redefined through homosexuality Transgenderism and Beyond, 
David Arthur. That is what he looked like. It's just hard thing to comprehend that someone would be like he he was going by page. So him being transgender, what was going on is he was taking all the the injections and he was slowly morphing into a woman resembling a woman not truly a woman because obviously I'm going to try to tread lightly because I have to do this out of love but no matter what he did to himself he was always going to be a man because that's what his DNA says and of course they're trying to change people's DNA now um of course, that's been going on a while. I have, that'll probably link to the Mark of the Beast. Um, so, David, he became this girl and became a woman, then started abusing all these people, including died children and men. You know, he's going to truck stops and rest stops and selling himself on the streets then becoming an escort so he he, was, he slept with ten thousands of men I said tens of thousands of men that's a hard number to comprehend so that when he realized that he got HIV he can he went to one of his friends and they were like you know, somebody gave it to you, you do the same. So, only God knows the number of how many people contracted HIV through David Arthur. This is, the first half of this book is very difficult to get into. Because he gets into what he did. So the, so when I got this book the other day and as I'm reading it, I'm reading what he's done and I'm just thinking about the Catholic Church the whole time because I'm reading this grand jury report, like I said, over 800 pages, and I'm just seeing parallels. And it's hard. It's uh, I can't say that word. I wish I could get rid of that word. Um, but there are just so many parallels of what the what these priests, which are supposed to be good people, God supposed to be using these people. In the meantime, Satan twists their minds and hearts. And obviously, I told you before that they're not allowed to be married, so they're surrounded by children. So what is Satan going to do? So you hear the same kind of stories in here. Where he was a predator. These priests are predators. But as things progressed. His HIV got worse. And it became full blown AIDS and. Then he slowly started decaying. Because it, technically that's what, what happens anyway, right? You know, we're, we're born and we just slowly decay to death. Because that sin is there. Death is a sin. And that's what Jesus, that's one of the last things that Jesus is going to get rid of. Is death. Because he didn't create us like that. He didn't create Adam and Eve to be in sin. Satan did that. Satan is the one that caused this sin and all these multiple sins. So the stuff that David was going through was just... It's horrific. Like, it, it's, it was really difficult getting through half of this book. But praise God, the second half, as he's lying there, going,
going through these multiple treatments and just slowing down the inevitable of death. He called out to God and he started reading his reading the word. He started listening to audios and guards he started getting closer. The next thing you know, a miracle happened. You know, God came in and started changing his life. Started getting rid of that stinking thinking. So here he is in that bed, calling out to God, repenting of everything that I was reading in this book. We'll put a picture at the end. So you could see it in all the details. But watching that. And listening to his story. Like, listening to his story was. Very eye opening. When Michael first had him on. And of course since that Michael's had him on again. And I got led. To which he has. He has a website. It's called. I belong, amen. I'm going to put links at, the, at the, the end. And you'll find it in the description on you, in YouTube. Um, and of course, when I found this book, because I had to read it, I, I couldn't, you know, hearing it is wonderful, but just like the Bible, you, I, I want to read as I'm hearing his story through his own words. Um, But all of a sudden, I started doing research, and I didn't realize that he has he does videos, and he was doing them every day. It's Alphabet Man Live at Alphabet Alphabet Man Live dot com, and another link will be there. So I started watching these videos, and of course, like I said, at work, so I convert them so I can listen to them. So I've been listening to them and it just, it's amazing what God has done from this cindered man that became a woman and living this horrible, horrible lifestyle. I, I was thinking of a word, but words can't express. Of what Satan can do to a person. But what God can do to a person is amazing. So the second half of this book, it's, it's amazing. And only God can do that. That's not your brain doing that. God exists. It's not your mind playing tricks. That, like I told you with my testimony, I was getting ready to murder two people. That's not me that stopped that. That's not my thoughts who stopped that. That was the living Christ. Stop that. Where I would probably be in jail still. For murdering two people. But praise God. He stopped me. Just like praise God. He changed David Arthur. So David Arthur's been doing these. Uh, videos. Every day. And all of a sudden, he, he started going to these different events. He, he speaks out a lot, obviously. So God has given him such an amazing testimony that he could open doors that normal people can't get into. And that is this LBGT, ad letters, pedophile community. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. So he can get into these different areas and talk because he's talking from his heart. And that's the most important part is we have to, we do this out of love. You know, I come off I try not to come off as angry, but it's God inside me that's angry. That's because he's fed up with a lot of this stuff. He's calling everybody to him. He's calling the churches. The churches are falling. Come out of them, my people. 
but it seems like throughout David's travels, he, he was traveling with somebody in the uh, and uh, he wanted to document David's life. So he went back to these various areas where this book came alive. <laughs> And David realized that God was putting him on, on another path because he was being shown different individuals to meet, to meet with and talk to. He talked about this couple and he was led to McDonald's by God because that's what God does. You've got to be a willing vessel. You hear that still small voice, that spirit talking to your spirit. And he was led to McDonald's to this older couple. And he was overhearing them. And next thing you know, he walks over to them and starts talking to them. They just came from seeing their son. And he's the son is proclaiming he's gay. And he should have been born a woman. But God used David. He sat down with them. And he told him his testimony. Because that's what we're all supposed to do. We're supposed to share our testimony. Obviously our testimony gets built more stone strong. As we continue our walk with the Lord. So. He talked with this couple. And hopefully. He'll get in contact with the son. The son's name is Bill. So keep Bill in prayer. Um, his par his parents were Bill and Gretchen. So keep them in prayer. Keep them strong. Because God's going to use them too. To be stronger. And understand that. This is a lie from the enemy. It is a sin. Just like the other sins. You can name any sins. I mean. With adultery. It's a sin. I mean that's that's a, that's a major sin, but so was this. You never mind thinking you're want to have relations with the same sex, but you're physically transforming your body. Now, if you read your word, our body is the temple of God. Obviously, there's no physical temple no more when Jesus left praise God when he's dead and raised and he came back resurrected when he left he brought down the Holy Spirit to his apostles to his disciples and next thing you know here comes what should be Christianity it's it's the way but obviously, this word is truth. Because Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through him. And it's absolutely true. But when David was at the end and he was dying, when he was calling out to God, he was learning. His lifestyle was horrible. And he needed to repent of anything, everything, and he did. Then God slowly, God miraculously cured him from death. So much he describes it is when we become born again, we die to ourselves. As the Bible says, and we become born again. This person died. David became a born again Christian, a born again Bible believer. Um, I just want to say one more thing. But get this book. I'm gonna put links. There's links on Amazon. Um, you could buy a book like I have, which you gotta have a book in your hand. You know what I mean, we gotta have this electronic stuff is nice. You could do a lot, but to have something physical that you could physically show somebody 
it's very important so you can go on Amazon I'm gonna put the link there and you could buy the Kindle version and of course apparently he's got an app which is good I gotta buy the app since I can read to see the book but this is the world and I just want to read this one part if you bought this book this is on page 44 If children choose to confide in a teacher or a counselor at school, they can be referred to an adult LGBT activist who, will, who is allowed to visit your child's school specifically to meet with your child in private without the knowledge or the parent's permission. That's what's going on in the schools right now. In the same way with children getting pregnant. Same thing. Without the parent knowing. The way the world has changed. And redefined. The rules. You might not even know that. That your child. Aborted a baby. And possibly, the way things are going, the school possibly paid for it. It hurts my heart because it hurts the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They grieve to hear these things. But he counteracts the devil get this book and if, if this you know if it might mean something to you um, get this book because this ties in other things obviously this ties in the abortion thing because our children are being sold on the streets just like David was the next thing you know David's story is a miracle there's not a lot of miracles out there that's why I want to lift him up in prayer that's the most important part David has an amazing testimony so he's going on the road to share it and he realized that you know, he can go to all these events, which I pray I'm going to talk to him about coming to the event next year. Because we have Pittsburgh Pride Festival. Pride is a sin. It's right in your face. It's right in everybody's faces. So hopefully I can get him here. And hopefully I can be stronger in the knowledge that the Lord is given me and to be bold because this is a bold beginning for me which was to do videos so you got to keep David in prayer because he's on the streets doing warfare he's on their territory doing warfare but praise God he God is showing him these individuals that he's going to be able to talk to personally and minister to them. But most importantly, show him the Lord. Because the Lord's the most important part. So, uh, I'm not, David's not going to ask you, but I'm going to ask you. Um, what he's been doing is living out of his car, and that's the point it's gotten to. So he's going to spend his life on the road. So I pray you go on these two websites and watch his videos and pray. And I pray that you help him in his mission. And if we're sitting here just like I am, um, 
prayer is important. You keep him in prayer. But most importantly, if you can help him out, I'm going to start doing it myself. Because if he's living life on the road, God is going to use him mightily. Give all things to the Lord. Let's end it in prayer. Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up for this wonderful, wonderful story. This wonderful obedience. The miracle that you did. So you can lift up this. Just like anybody else, Lord. Useless. <laughs> Sin-ridden being. And change him. Who you want him to be. And use him mightily. Lord, I pray you. Find in people's hearts to help this man. Even with prayer. With some money. Because he has a lot of traveling he's going to be doing. Never mind. Lord, send your angels down to where he's at at all times. And guard his vehicle. To guard him, to keep him, because obviously in that lifestyle he he endured a lot, including being shot at and stabbed. But you take something evil, Lord, and you turn it into you work with that clay, because we are clay, Lord, and you mold us in your image, and we're so grateful. But we gotta be obedient. Lord, I give it all to you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Look, I'm very grateful for everybody to listen to me. Um, like I said, this is Friday, August 17th, 2018. Um, you'll, su you'll see all the links. Um, just listen and ask God, <laughs> ask God to use you. And to hear what this man has to say because he's given God's message because that old person is dead he should have been dead but through God's grace he got born again if you want to talk to me I'm out there contact me findingpeacewithjesus at yahoo.com and that's my email but most importantly Go to FindingPeaceWithJesus.org and find truth. Truth is not, it's, it's difficult sometimes. But God is with us to ex expose the darkness and bring light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right? Through His grace, we have been saved. Amen.